Hey guys, Chris here, and I'm a Ukrainian Canadian. Today is February 14th, 2023. And let's get to the news happening in Ukraine, shall we? So first of all, happy St. Valentine's Day to all of you. And I truly hope you will enjoy today with all your loved ones. And so for my first slide, I wanted to talk about some good news from Bakhmut. And that is that the Ukrainian forces managed to pull off a successful, small, but yes, successful counteroffensive just south of Bakhmut, uh, more, more specifically in uh, close to the 20504 highway that I've mentioned multiple times before. And this perhaps just gives more time for the Ukrainians to uh, do successful retreat. I still don't think that they're going to be defending Bakhmut um, for the next couple months as the Russians continue and keep on pushing, trying to encircle Bakhmut, and it's becoming very dangerous. Um, and so I think that personally, I don't see the, the Ukrainians defending Bakhmut, um, and by the end of February, they most likely will pull out of the city. But we'll have to see. I'm always open to good news, <laughs> for sure, and I wish i can only wish that and hope that the ukraine force will manage to uh to defend and continue defending bakhmut until a russian defeat but um things are not looking that great right now at least but this small counteroffensive definitely gives and buys more time because the russians i think for the last two weeks have you know they've gained about this amount of territory here so you know in two weeks they've lost a crazy amount of you know soldiers and Wagnerites and all that. Um, and the Ukraines managed to pull off a very good counteroffensive in you know, the span of one day. So hoping that perhaps they can push them back to Kishivka. But again, uh, we'll, time will tell. Time will definitely tell. And so apart from this, there's not much that happened today in terms of the map updates. Um, I'll make more videos in the next couple of days if there's anything crazy that will happen. But again, the Russians are the major counteroffensive right now, and they're really trying to pull off some sort of victory because Putin needs something for February 24th. For them, it's an anniversary. For the Ukrainians, a miserable um, war that the Russians started for no reason. So uh, for one group of people, it's a celebration, perhaps. And for the other, it's um, just an atrocious war that was completely unnecessary. But so that's that. Now... For the other um, slide, I am recommending you guys to watch this video that was uploaded by Vice News. Now, I used to really like Vice News. They used to pull off a lot of great content. Specifically was the 2014 Russian Roulette series that they created uh, that was led initially by Simon Ostrovsky, if I'm not mistaken. And he no longer works with Vice News, but it would give a great insight at what was happening in Ukraine back in 2014 in Donbass. And they really captured all these insane moments um, of how everything developed up to the point where we're at now. You know, it really gave this kind of image and this foundation of understanding of what led uh, to this brutal war uh, last year. And for the Ukrainians, this war didn't start in 2022. But it truly began in 2014 when Russia illegally next Crimea and started the proxy war in Donbass. So I am not a huge fan anymore of Vice News because their content now is mediocre. But this video is great because it shows you the insanity that is currently brewing in, in Russia. And these are regular civilians and activists that, as you can see here, I took screenshots, are talking about how they should be redirecting you know, Russian nukes towards American cities, as you can see here. The other person here that was uh, taking part of a um, protest in the front of the U.S. Embassy in Moscow is saying that she hopes soon that the entire country will be called up, mobilized, and that she, even she will go to fight there in Ukraine. And this other nutcase is saying that he believes that there's a pro-Western elite that has formed in Russia and that they need to get rid of it, and that Putin is the only person that uh, is fighting these you know, pro-Western elite in Russia. And so, you know, these extremists are becoming more and more vocal because Putin likes them. And, you know, Russia has simply no future with people like them. Absolutely no future. And unfortunately, um, perhaps not all of them or it's not all of them that are in the majority, but you can identify them either as these not cases or people that simply don't care to do anything against this war. So, and the other point I wanted to discuss is that 
these people, if they were to protest against Putin, wouldn't be because they're against the war in Ukraine. It's because they're not winning in Ukraine and that they want a strong leader to swallow Ukraine completely, right? And Putin isn't really capable in doing that. So that's the only reason why the Russians, in my opinion, at this point would be trying to depose Putin or depose the regime because things are not, are not going um, to the way that they were promised it would go. So watch the video, watch this uh, small little video by Vice News because it gives you great insight about the, the cuckoos living in Russia. This is another outrageous news. Um, it's evident this has been ongoing for the last couple of weeks, but uh, the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, is planning to admit Russia and Belarus into the Olympic Games, stating that, well, they shouldn't be discriminating the athletes just based on their passports. Um, and now the IOC president, Thomas Bach, is doubling down by denying his organization being on the wrong side of history. And... Um, Basically, this back guy, this president of the IOC, saying that you, we need to reread the prince, the five principles of the Olympic Charter, where it says that every or principle five of the Olympic Charter, which says that every individual must have the response, the possibility of practicing sport without discrimination of any kind, and in the Olympic spirit, which requires mutual understanding with a spirit of friendship, solidarity, and fair play. Okay, and where was this Russian solidarity when they killed 230 Ukrainian athletes that could have played and could have participated in these Olympics? There seems to be a lot of details that are omitted by uh, this president. And it's a very worrisome trend, in my opinion, because there's a lot of these sports organizations, whether it be FIFA, the IOC, which have become notorious at giving a platform of legitimacy for these authoritarian regimes. Right, um, and even allowing corruption to just completely rot these organizations from top to bottom. And this is all done under the pretext, well, we're strengthening world peace and cooperation, that we need to give a voice to these countries that unfortunately you know, uh, are persecuted by the West. It's absolutely BS. And the only reason why they're doing that is perhaps that they're getting a lot of money, uh, corrupt money, to um, allow countries like Russia and Belarus and Iran and China and Qatar and you know the Saudi Arabian Saudi Arabia to participate in you know in activities sports activities and um, and even the Olympics. So to me, it's very worrisome and something really needs to be done because it's absolutely outrageous that a terrorist sponsor like Russia is allowed to play in the Olympics next year. And uh, the final news is that great stuff coming out of Le uh, of Poland. The Ukrainian tankers uh, are already training with the Leopard 2s in Poland. And um, you can see here, this is the testimony of one of the Ukrainian ta tankers uh, who's kind of giving a testimony about uh, you know his first impressions of the Leopard 2s. So he's saying that as of today, I can see that the vehicle is of high quality, very good. His name is Vadim. And what I like is that our soldiers like it very much as well. I think that the time period given to us will be enough to learn the vehicles. All my soldiers, including myself personally, came from the Eastern Front, Donetsk, Luhansk, directly from the combat zone. So we didn't have much time. We received the command and literally in two, three days, we were ready in Poland. This is the speed that these Ukrainian heroes are, are working with, right? What would take perhaps months for, you know, a regular soldier to learn all the systems. The Ukrainians are accelerating it by like 500%, if not even more. Um, that's also something that we need to give credit for the Ukrainian forces, this, their willingness to just learn quickly to get these weapons to the front lines as quickly as possible. Um, these guys are just true heroes. And you can see that this man is no young you know, soldier. He's, he's definitely of age, and even he's willing to give his life for the future of Ukraine. A true, absolute hero. My respect to him. Currently, we significantly lack armored vehicles, and I hope that we, when we arrive with vehicles to the front line, it will save the lives of many of our soldiers and bring us closer to victory. 
I'm 57 years old and I'm a pensioner for a very long time. But on the first day of the war, I came to war to war as a volunteer. Absolute hero. This guy could have, you know, pulled off all the excuses he wanted because he's definitely of age. And yet he decided to fight for Ukraine and for the sovereignty of a country that he believes in. And um, that's really heartwarming for me to think that there is millions of Ukrainians that are ready to fight to the death for the, a bright future in Ukraine. So if you guys enjoy my content, please subscribe to my channel. And please support the Ukrainian army. They need your help right now. So if you can donate money towards the Ukrainian Armed Forces or any other organization within Ukraine, um, that's really going to push all of us closer to Russian defeat. So that's it. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much.